Hey YouTube, Andrew here, a guy with a tractor. Today we're going to do a review on my 2019 John Deere 3025E. I've had this tractor for about four months now, almost four months. I've got almost 60 hours on it, 57 and some change. And I use this tractor primarily for my business of doing bush hogging and driveway repair for people who do not have a tractor that needs stuff done. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these or want to know the features, what I like, what I dislike about it, stay tuned and I'm going to go over This is my disclaimer. No one has bought me any of this equipment. I've paid for every bit of this out of my own money. Nobody's paying me to say good things or bad things about one product or another. So this is my disclaimer. All right, so pro number one that I like the most about this tractor is the hydrostatic drive. My last tractor didn't have a hydrostatic drive. None of the tractors growing up had hydrostatic drive. Um, more or less going into a tractor nowadays, a new one, you're limited on this size of a hydrostatic. Um, I'd always been, I'd had Kubota. I'd never had a John, De John Deere. I never drove a John Deere. I didn't want a John Deere because they were ooh, more expensive supposedly. So I got out to the lot and my dealer was like, have you looked at the John Deere's? I looked at them and started looking at prices. I'm like, hey, I can do that. And, but it, wanted, it had to come down to what worked best for me. It may be different for you. Um, I literally had the opportunity on the same lot to drive a Kubota L2501 hydrostatic and this John Deere 3025E hydrostatic. I would get on one, drive it, turn around and get on the other one and drive the exact same spot in the parking lot, play with the loaders, you know, back and forward, four wheel drive, um, all, all sorts of little tests there in the parking lot. And hands down, the John Deere Twin Touch has got the Kubota treble pedal beat, in my opinion, all day long. The Kubota, I had to think about switching from forward to reverse. I physically had to pick my foot up and almost look down and find where the pedal was to go reverse. And not to mention it wasn't as easy. Pushing it with your pedal or the pedal with your heel is not, we're not as used to that as we are with our cars using our, our foot. And on the John Deere, it was just almost natural to go forward and move your foot over and go reverse. And that was one of the biggest features that said, I'm gonna get a John Deere over a Kubota. For you, you may like the treble pedal. You never know. Um, but I do recommend getting out and trying the different options you have to see which one works best for you. All right, so the second big feature that I wanted in my new tractor was a loader. And of course, you know, buying new tractors, you can be a loader pretty much on any tractor you can buy. Um, growing up, I always had a loader and then I had my first tractor, personal tractor was, didn't have one. And it was really limiting of what I wanted to do with the tractor and I couldn't do because I didn't have a loader. And like my dad said, he goes, I don't know how I ever got by without having a loader. And it's, it's true, once you have one and you find uses for your loader everywhere. Um, this has the 300E loader on it. I'm not gonna get into specs as far as lift capacity, lift height, all that stuff that is well advertised online. Everybody can find that. Um, there hasn't been anything that I've tried to lift, asterisk, that it hasn't lifted. Um, I've moved gravel, I've moved mulch, dirt, um, redid my in-laws driveway with asphalt millings, it lifted full buckets of that, heaped up, no problem whatsoever. Um, and the reason I said asterisk was I've tried pulling up some small trees and stumps and stuff, pushing it to its limits. It does have limits for this size of tractor. Um, I have met those 
but as far as going out and just hauling anything that this 60 inch bucket will haul it will lift it no problem um, uh, the refrigerator you see behind me I literally set it in the bucket strapped it down picked it up hauled it up from the basement up here at the garage no problem whatsoever still full of drinks and all the food that was in it so um, I don't know how much that weighs but it was a weight that was way out in front of the pivot pins and like I said it lifted it no problem at all um, very pleased with the look another feature I was looking for was a quick attached bucket on my loader the tractor I had the B2320 the loader that I could get with it quick attach was not an option it was pin on only and eventually I want to be able to have pallet forks and possibly a grapple and maybe one of the bush hogs on the front the lane sharks or something like that um, and without quick attach that is I won't say impossible, but it is really difficult every time you want to change something. The, um, I always used uh, skid steer quick attach, which is what the Kubota had. I was familiar with that. Um, the John Deere's, they come with their own, everybody's like, oh, it's a proprietary quick attach. Yes and no. Um, it is John Deere's. You won't find it on any other machine but that does not mean you have to buy John Deere stuff. Any reputable manufacturer that manufactures attachments for the front of this tractor will offer it in a John Deere quick attach. There might be an upcharge, 50 bucks, but hey, if you look closely, usually there's an upcharge also for skid steer quick attach. So um, I don't find that as a con. I find it as a feature that they come with it. It's standard feature and not a added feature like some of the competitors are and you are paying extra for that i'm sure you're paying for it but you don't see it in the result so this is a 25 roughly gross pto engine horsepower tractor um, you're getting roughly 17 ish i think from what i've read online don't quote me it was enough at the time I thought hey it's all good don't have the emissions it's a old school straight up diesel motor none of that DPF DEF emissions jump on there um, I, I really want to stay away from that um, but eventually I'm gonna to have to um, the ones that do not have the emissions on them are a chunk of money cheaper I will say but at the time I needed the tractor I didn't have the money to get a bigger tractor that had all that system on it so that was one of the cost saving risk versus gain thing that I did um, and I do will get into a con on it um, as far as pulling power um, and all that I haven't had one issue whatsoever. The only issue I've had is PTO power. Um, my last tractor was 23 horse, it was a gear drive. I ended up actually getting more PTO horsepower out of it. Um, now I run a four foot cutter on that one. Never had an issue whatsoever. Cut some massive stuff with it thick. Never bogged it down once. This one on the other hand, um, running a five foot cutter because it is a wider tractor. And if you are maintaining a field where you're cutting it regularly, it's not an issue. Um, and what I get into is I'm not, there's a few fields I am maintaining that, you know, they call me regularly to come and cut the fields for them. Most of the time it's, this field hasn't been cut in several years. I need you to come cut it. The grass is super thick, it's tall, it's grown up with woody brush. And what I find myself is when it gets that, I can't take a full width cut. And I, I end up cutting three, maybe four foot at a time. I have to, I can't implement the full width of the cutter. And that's just being a downside of it only being 25 horsepower. People say that a 25 horsepower should not be running a five foot cutter. I will tell you that 
in the right conditions, it will cut, turn that cutter all day long and never miss a beat. But with me, I'm pushing it to the limits of this size tractor. I really need probably a 30, the 3038E behind it as far as this setup to, to effectively run that cutter in the type of conditions that I'm running it in. The next thing I was looking at was sheer weight of the, the tractor. Yeah, I can get a smaller tractor with same horsepower or more horsepower, but I was really wanting that weight. If you don't have that weight, you can't put your power to the ground. Um, I run into that with my Kubota. Um, I run a land plane behind it using doing driveways, and that Kubota would literally just sit there and spin almost with that. Um, it didn't have field tires, it didn't have a loader on it, so it was roughly 1,400 pounds um, machine weight, not counting the, uh, the implement. But that was one thing I really needed. So when I went to the 3 Series, I got a lot of weight. I Roughly how this one sits with the tractor, the loader, the field tires and everything, I'm pushing right at 4,000 pounds, which is a big jump of from what I was with. It's more stable. It don't bounce around in fields. You do have that power. You can put the the power to the ground. It's it's really hard to get this one to to break free and spin the tires on on dry material. That's you're you're able to dig and and do the work that you need. So. The next features that I'm going to talk about that I like, I'm going to be moving the camera around and get you closer images of it. And so you're not just sitting here looking at me standing beside a tractor talking the entire time. So I'm going to move the camera around and show you some different features as far as controls and how they operate and why I like them or why I dislike them. All right, so with the hydrostatic bin on the other side, it has a single brake lever or brake pedal right here. Um, that is one downside. You don't have your independent brakes to do uh, brake turning with, but there is another feature included with this brake pedal that I absolutely love. Um, anyone that's ever run tractors knows that most of the time your differential lock is a little lever that sticks out right here and you have to find it with your heel and more or less stand on it to get it to work. Um, this one, I'm going to take the brake break off here. I'm in a level garage, so I'm not worried about it going anywhere. Um, you literally just press it down about three quarters of an inch, and that engages your rear differential lock. Um, and then as you press further, it engages your brake. So by doing that, every time you hit your brake, you do lock your rear tire so you're not braking with just one tire, you're braking with both it simultaneously. Um, but what I have figured out is on the parking brake, if you take it up two clicks, it don't actually engage your brake, but it does lock your differential. So you're not having to sit there and hold it the entire time. They don't advertise that in the book, it's just something I found out if I'm in real slippery conditions where I need that constantly locked, I don't have to sit here and hold my foot on this, which is way better than holding it on the little pedal in the back. But you can just click that up twice and rock on. Um, I would use caution to doing that on concrete and in your yard, because when you turn, it's gonna mess your yard up because these tires are locked. Um, but a real handy feature to know. Um, parking brake's in a good spot. You literally, it's like a car. You just pull it up, click it, you're good. Um, four wheel drive, pull up to put it in four wheel drive, push it down. Um, anyone that has problems with this, I found if you've been going forward, you know, hit over and go reverse just a little bit and this will just fall right out of place. It's just taking the pressure off the gears. This is where some people get into the argument orange versus green um, is in your range selector everybody argues oh the the orange tractors have three ranges therefore you get 
more low range and you can pull more and this, that, and the other. Um, the John Deere's have two range, high and low. Um, I don't see a downside to that. The low range is where I'm doing all my work in. The only time I go to high range is when I'm out, you know, going from point A to point B. My kids love to take tractor rides and I'll ride them through the subdivision on it. I'm in high range for that. Um, plenty of power, no, never complained about only having two ranges. Um, at one time I was brainwashed and think, well, I need those three ranges. It's not really an issue. All my work's done in low range and transporting is in high range. Um, you could, I think there was one time I had, I was, I was cutting a field and it was real, it had been cut about a month before that I'd cut it and it was nice and smooth and level and I was able to kick up in high range and really, really cover some ground. But having two ranges is, is not a downside at all, no matter what you hear. I haven't had any issues out of the two range transmission. Um, another feature I like is the having the grab handles on both sides. My other tractor only had it on one side and not the other. Um, I can get on and off of this tractor easily both sides. Some people said, well, you're not supposed to get off that side, but on the tractors that don't that don't have a loader, there's no reason you can't get on as long as you can step up. There's not a step over there. Um, I wish they had put a step like they did on the left-hand side of the tractor, like on the right side, it would really make it easier. But I'm 6'1", I have long legs. I can climb in and off this thing either side. Another thing is the built-in storage right here. Um, have some odds and ends in it. You can actually put a lot of stuff in there. Um, haven't had an issue with it. It's still packed to close, but it don't fly open by no means. The next thing I want to go over back here is your fuel gauge and your fuel cap. Um, this is one feature I wish they would have put in the instrument cluster. There is a spot just to the left of the tachometer. Would have been a perfect spot. I understand, you know, this is cheaper. It's easier wiring and whatnot, easier to replace. Um, and it's not too terribly bad. You can turn around and keep an eye on it. The fuel cap, the fuel location is really easy. Um, I don't have an issue with it because I do all my filling on the trailer when I pull up at a, between jobs at a fuel station. So I can literally come in from the backside, put my fuel in, never an issue. Um, the fuel cap is attached to the chain, so you can't lose it. And I just sprinkled diesel everywhere. I will tell you, if you leave this cap off and drive about 20 miles, um, whatever's behind the tractor will be covered in diesel. Um, I had a friend that did that. Hint, hint, not really. <laughs> the, uh, there is one weird feature though, and it took me a while to figure it out. When I would park the tractor and I've been running it a while, I would hear this hissing noise and it kept pairing on me. I kept thinking I had a tire that was leaking air. And what it came out to be was the cap sucking in the air where it was pulling. It's a non-vented, really. So as the tractor pulls fuel out, it's got to pull air in. And it pulls it around the cap and it really whistles. So you've been running it real hard and you just shut it off and it's quiet. You can hear that whistling. And it sounds like your tire's going you've got a hole in your tire and you start panicking try that first pop the cap off and see if it stops good chance that it will unless you have purchased a tire all right this video may be a little shaky i'm sitting in the seat just holding the camera but i wanted to show you the uh instrument cluster comes on does this little walk through um we don't have a glow plug or wait to start indicator which is kind of weird um, on a diesel tractor. Um, there's our engine hours. That's how many hours the engines actually run. If we push this button, we'll cycle through our different things. We have uh, 52.6 vehicle hours, which is movement, and 29.2 uh, hours of PTO use. 
and back and when you're once your PTO is engaged and you're wide open um, there's no mark here for your PTO speed it actually comes up as a bar across here and gives you your actual RPMs off your PTO shaft um, which is nice then this is where I was talking about I wish they had put the fuel gauge yeah they didn't but oh well saving money uh, the throttle very easy to operate up and down which is turtle is slow and that's wide open throttle um, this is a lot easier to operate than the gear shift style um, that I've had in the past you have your like I said we cycle through everything this one is your emergency flashers turn signals left turn signals right um, headlights on and then that is work lights I'm going to do a different video on that that feature that is not a standard feature the the switch is always comes there but initially when I got the tractor that didn't do anything and I'm going to go over of how I wired up some work lights and hopefully help you all out and save you all some money on that there's our loader it's located just off to the right um, let me say the more premium features is it's back here on the side panel I'm used to this. I haven't had any learning curve or anything. This is where this is actually way more closer to me than, say, my father's tractor, which is like I had to reach way out here to operate it almost. This one, really comfortable. It does have a a float detent, so you can float your bucket. Um, you know your standard features that have been on loaders forever. The controls are easy. Right here, this lever, you pull it out. And it locks your it locks your controls. Um, I do that when I have the kids on the tractor. They 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 they'll reach over and try to hit that, and I don't want the loader going to the ground or dropping something. So um, that's a nice feature to have. Also, um, if I'm bush hogging and I got limbs coming in, I lock it. That way, it's not limbs ain't catching it and making the loader do funky stuff. On the right hand side of the tractor, we have a little box odds and ends storage whatnot um get a cup holder it'll hold the bigger you know energy sports drinks gatorade powerade stuff like that and also taper down and hold smaller drinks in there um have a 12 volt charging port charge cell phone um run i got an electric sprayer i put on it i can plug in there power that off of um i'll give you a word of warning if you plug your cell phone in here and lay your phone in here then the cords here a limb can catch it and pull it off the tractor either run over it or hit it with the bush hog bad day um i'm gonna have another video coming out on a better location for that and how i'm gonna wire that up um pto is very easy to operate on this that's the off position that's the on position to actually start it you push it one more to a detent it'll start up your pto beauty about this is once this is running forward backwards it don't matter that pto is running and there's no clutching turning it on turning it off it's really nice when you're using the bush hog and you're backing up under trees or under fence rows there's there's no delay as far as as far as that um you have two more switch plates here um you can put more switches in there's wiring harness in here for the um cruise control feature you can add i'm probably not going to be adding that i don't i don't really feel the need to it but you have two more switches here you can put in if you need something and there's also one right here by the throttle that you can add another switch if you need it so you don't have to go drilling holes you can literally you can buy some panel rocker switches and, and snap them right into these which is a really nice feature all right uh, it's kind of hard to see in here over the uh the loader control but right here is a lever for your to slide your seat back and forth i said i'm six one i keep it slid all the way back it's plenty comfortable for me the uh, loader control is kind of hard to see. It's black it's right here on the right-hand side. Um, uh, it's position control, so there's numbers right here. Um, I don't know if you want to see those or not. It's really hard to get the camera in here. Um, there's different numbers, 
and there's a lock that you just flip up and move um, up and down and lock it back and then the loader will or the thing will only go to that that stop and so when I'm bush hogging you know I have a certain setting I set on it and every time I pick it up and lower the loader back down it goes to the same spot so this right here is your rate of drop control every tractor I've ever operated has had a control up front and a little knob you turn and it determines how fast your three-point implement will will fall once you lower your control on this one it shows it right here but it's got this arrow that points back and I'm gonna move the camera and try to get in here and show it to y'all I'm gonna try to show this to you all without this little T handle right here and you can see get that leaf out of the way that uh, right there I'm trying to do this so you can see it let me move the other hand here right down in here is the this is the control it shows you which way um, then turning it towards a negative will slow your control down how fast your implement drops and plus will speed it up um, at first it was a little hard to turn this um, since I've turned it a time or two it's pretty easy to turn to it's just a little it's a pain to get to um, you can do it from the seat if you got flexible long arms you can get down in there and and do it it's just not as convenient as having it up front between your legs so this is another one I'm gonna have to have the camera handheld you can see this little ring right in here that is your oil dipstick now when they designed this tractor and figured out where that was going to be was probably on a tractor that did not have this loader right here now the problem is it's not getting it out that's the issue it's getting it back in and see how dark it is back in there and trying to find the hole that it goes in way back in there is a real pain um, so it makes your daily inspections a little little time consuming i've learned just to get a lot out and and put it back in um, your ulse or your fuel separator um, filter all right here um, it's no real issue as far as is that it is behind the loader arm but no problems getting to it the as far as getting into the hood to check your belts and stuff you do have to have a key um, you pop it in here and the hood comes up there it don't it's not like a car hood that once you hit it it pops up you'll be sitting here poking the key in thinking I ain't got it unlocked and literally it's it's unlocked and it it'll raise right up um, you do have to remove the side panel from the other side to uh, clean out your air filter and whatnot, but luckily there uh, there are two screws, and I'll I'll show you that here in a second. Here's what I was talking about on this. Okay, the key goes in, but nothing happens with the hood, but it actually does unlatch it. Um, walk around here to the front. One thing that I did like on my Kubota was that this part would would roll out a little bit. And allow you more room and there's there's no radiator screen in here as some of the other tractors it is an option you can get it um, i haven't got it um, this is a pretty fine screen and keeps most of your trash out of your radiator um, there's a little bit down in there not too awful bad battery so easy jumping headlights maintenance is all right here your uh, reservoir cooler for your puke jug and looks like I need to add some uh, coolant to that. Um, then we have, well, that's what I was talking about. You can pop these off right here and right here. And then you can pull your air filter out and clean it and make sure all that's good. And then you can, once this, this panel's off, this is the one I really take off the most. Um, the right hand side of the tractor over there. I rarely take that one off. 
this is the one I take off regularly. Um, clean my air filter, check my belts and all that stuff down in there. Another feature I like is the the grease circs that are recessed into the pins here. Um, these are the more expensive, nicer pins. Some of them, some of your tractors you'll find, you know, your grease circs are, you know, down here actually on the joint. The problem with those are you may have to move your loader around to figure out how to get where are all your grease lengths? This one is easy. There's six off on each side of the loader. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And they're all greasable from the outside. And if you're wondering where I bought it, Nelson's Tractor Company in Blairsville, Georgia. If you're in the area and looking for a tractor, they're a great place. Great, great customer service. One problem I did have was my loader cylinders from the factory were um, all bad. And it was, as I was using the tractor, the front bucket would just slowly dump and get real, have a lot of slack in it and hit a bump and it would, the actual, this cylinder would, would bounce around. And these, it wouldn't hold. Um, I set it up in here, stopped, put a tape measure on it, seen what it was, and it was dropping an inch about every three minutes. It dropped the 30 inches that it was in the air in 10 minutes. So took it back, they warranted on they ended up putting all new cylinders on it. They were defective on the inside, even with new seal kits and everything put in them, they wouldn't do like they were supposed to and had too much drop in them. Um, I don't know if that's a common thing on these. I just know it happened on my model the dealership took care of it in and out, no problem. So that wasn't an issue at all with, as far as my first warranty work I had done with it. All right, working our way to the back of the tractor, um, as far as leap, three point linkage goes, um, your top link, it comes with a pretty decent top link. There is no grease cirque on this one to keep it greased. Um, I keep it, I spray some lubricant on here every now and then keep it greased up. Um, and it don't, I wish it had the folding handle so you can really get some leverage on it. Um, it's got these rings on it that you, you can put a, a wrench or something through and get some more leverage if you need it. You got three different positions back here that your top link can hook in. Um, the bottom one being the most that when you pick up your your implement or really raise up. The next one's not so much. And the, the top link here, or where you put your top, very top link in, and when you pick up your implement pretty much goes up and down the level. Um, different features listed in the owner's manner for different things. Most of the time I keep it in the bottom one. That way when I pick up my bush hog, it gets the, the tail wheel as high as it, it can. Um, your, your level linkage over here on the right hand side does have a grease fitting on it. Um, you can see it right in there. Um, there is no adjustable link ends on these, on these three points, which is a downside. I could upgrade them, but eventually I want to get a quick hitch because all my implements are quick hitch compatible and that will eliminate this issue of not having extendable link ends. And also the frustration of working with these turnbuckle stabilizers, which are just horrible. But these are better than my last tractor. The last one, they were on the inside. So when you didn't have something attached, they automatically fail everything. Both your arms ended up right here in the center. And it was a real pain to back up and hold them apart and get it hooked up. Um, so that, that is, that's one of my downside features that I don't like. There is a really good uh, place to hang the um, top link on here. And something's happened with my spring. It's not even on my spring anymore. There you go. Yeah, it's supposed to be up like that. And then you hook your, uh, keep your top link up and out of the way when you're not using it. Um, PTO shield comes up good. Um, no issues there. One issue I do wish that it came with, it's an added feature, I don't even know how much it is, is a drawbar 
Um, you have to buy extra to put on like bolts on and then you can actually put the draw bar. Um, I haven't had a real need for a heavy duty draw bar. Um, I've just used the one that I can put between my two three point links. Right. One little pain in the rear is these rock pins, the clips in this cable that are run through over here. Um, I have to put mine in the straight back position. Um, I can't drop it all the way down because it'll hit my lights I put on the back. Um, so I keep it in the straight back one to get it in the garage. And then when I'm out working, I raise it up. Um, these pins though, they're a pain. They're, they're kind of offset. So like this way, they might not go in. Then you have to flip it over like this. And this little cable is just a, it's a real pain. I would like to see a, a little chain or something that was a little bit more flexible, but eh, it's a small gripe. See what I'm talking about? It wouldn't go in that way. It'll go in that way. One more little feature that I would call a feature, I call it a downside. And it may just be my tractor, I don't really know. When I'm in here on the concrete, it's a nice level of concrete. <coughs> Excuse me. And I go to set the lower down. The, I think it's the right side hits first and then it drops to the left. And then when it picks up, it does the same thing. I thought it was my tire pressures. I've made sure my tires are, are equal pressures and the tractor's not cockeyed. And put a level on the front bar here to make sure, you know, for the most part, the tractor's level and it's still, when you drop it, one loader arm hits before the other one and little trivial things um, I haven't really issued, found that to be an issue as far as using the loader it's just one of those you would think that it would set down level but it one side hits and then it's probably a good three quarter of an inch difference once it actually levels out but it will level out it's not like it one stops and then the other one stays up in the air an inch it will level out so when you're doing work and you drop it and you're down level on the ground, you can, you can go and, and get a good, good movement with it. All right. One other complaint I have is the seat safety switch. Now I know we have to have them and you know, without being in that, the tractor cuts off if it's in gear, the PTO will kick off. These are super sensitive. All the other ones I've ever run, it's been on the back here. It was, like you could raise your rear out of it. As long as you kept pressure back here, it would go. This one, if I end up starting to use the tractor and it's like, I can take my wallet out because it's hurting or something. And I lift one cheek off of it, it will end up cutting the tractor off. Or if I need to reach around and do a quick adjustment on the top link or something like that it'll it'll cut off so uh, be mindful of that you really have to keep your rear end planted in the seat for this to work uh, one more thing before we wrap this up is the available accessories for this line of tractor um, john deere has a few um, there's little things that if you want them and you dig hard enough you can find them one thing i want is armrest John Deere says, no, we don't sell them. But if you look at your part number for your seat, you know, there's an aftermarket company that makes replacement armrests for the one series, the 1025R and the 20 or the two series. Same seats on all three tractors. And as you can see, it's got the screws and the mounting plate and everything right here. You take these three bolts off, order it, and you can put them on there. Um, they're actually on Amazon. I want to think they're right at a hundred bucks just for the armrest. So I'm going to get me a, eventually get me a set of those. Make those long days a little bit easier. All right, we're going to go over some old things I've added. Uh, the spinner knob I added. I bought it with the tractor. I can't you, doing stuff all day long. You got to have one of those spinner knobs. If you don't have one of them you need to get it and try it it is amazing and they're cheap like 14 15 bucks at your dealership not bad at all um i did talk about some work lights i'd added um they're right here i want to do a little video on those i got one on each side 
because there was no you know white light off the back of the tractor and then the only other accessories i've added are the um the stuff from ken's bolt on hooks i've got a set of the hooks on and then i put the receiver plate in the center of the bucket and other than that this is a stock 2019 john deere 3025e so there you have it there's what i like what i dislike little features little things i wish i could change things i'm going to change um it's a working process everything takes money but um i hope you enjoyed the video maybe it helped you out in your decision on if you're going to buy i told you i was going to answer would i buy this tractor again yes if this one something was to happen say this one got stole or something right now would i buy this exact one right now no i would i would definitely get some more horsepower for what i need to do um, if you're mainly using it for loader work and you're not running pto implements this is a great cheap tractor for that kind of stuff um, it's just not exactly enough what i need for running pto implements all the time but hands down it is a it's a great tractor it's 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 done good for me i can't complain about the amount of jobs that it's it's got done and purred right through them so if you enjoyed this video click the like button and subscribe for future videos this is my first video but i plan on having multiple videos coming out and all that's going to be on this channel is tractor related and outdoor stuff so thanks again for watching